In this lesson, we're going to learn what a node is, how to create nodes, how to connect and disconnect nodes, and several other things about modifying and editing nodes inside of ICE. Okay, so here's where we left off, and I'm still just inside that 04 begin scene. So we have our ICE tree uh, loaded up, and now let's take a look at nodes. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what is a node inside of ICE? And the answer is uh, pretty simple. Almost everything, well, not simple, but everything inside of ICE is a node. Every single one of these little boxes here is technically a node inside of ICE. Now nodes can do various things, and usually their name is a good indicator of what that node does. So right here, we're getting a null. And that was this null we see right here. And after we get the null, we pass that information to this emit from null node. And this emit from null is creating these particles inside of our viewport here. Now, for a node to take effect, it needs to be plugged into the ice tree. This ice tree node is a special node that happens uh, at the end of each of our ice trees. Now, if something is disconnected or not connected to this final ice tree node, it is not evaluated and it will do nothing. So, for example, if we disconnect our emit from null, which is creating our particles from the ice tree, we will see we have no particles inside of our scene. Now, you'll notice I just disconnected these two nodes, so now let's reconnect them. So to connect two nodes, we just simply need to drag from their data port, which is uh, these circles on the right-hand side, which are the output, and we need to drag that into some other node's input. So let me drag my ice tree so it's a little easier to see here. So again, that we can either go from output, which is on the right, to input, or let's actually disconnect this again. So to disconnect, you'll notice this connection highlights when I'm hovering over it. To disconnect two nodes, all I need to do is left click and drag and drop it anywhere not near a port. And you'll notice our icon changes to these scissors, and that means it's disconnected. So we just took a look at output to input, but we can also connect an output, or excuse me, an input to an output. I'm having a little trouble connecting that. Actually, I just recalled that it comes in the newer versions of Softimage. So if you're having trouble connecting the output to your input, simply go from output to input as opposed to the other way around. Now, nodes can be very simple, such as the get null node, which you'll notice uh, if we open up its display by clicking this top right icon, you can see it just has two inputs and two outputs, a value and a name. Now, some nodes uh, are quite more complex, such as this emit from null. You'll notice has it has very many inputs, and we have various nodes driving these inputs currently. So we have a randomize around value into the size. So what we get is the size of these particles is created randomly as it is emitted. Now, we also have something that creates strands, and essentially that's all we have plugged into this emit from null. Now we have a lot of different inputs here, so to access these inputs without actually plugging a node in, we can double left click any of these nodes and that will bring up their options. So you'll notice here that inside of our input window we have various options like this rate, the seed, the mass, the color, and so we can edit these different options right here inside of this panel as opposed to adding in or plugging in a different node to change these, essentially, attributes. Now you'll notice here that size is not available here, and that's because it's currently being driven by a different node. If we disconnect this, you'll notice that suddenly size appears here into our editor. Now, I'm going to plug that in, but you'll notice that my randomize around node uh, doesn't look like it has an output. So let's just talk briefly about these different display uh, options for our nodes. Now with one box filled in here at the top, you can see that our node is essentially hidden. And what that means is that any connections to this node are sort of folded in into a single line. Let's see if we have anything that has multiple lines coming out of it. Okay, we have this git beaker 2 down here in the background. 
So if we click once, you'll notice that it still has two lines coming out of it, but it looks like they're going into the same port. Now in this case, they are, but sometimes we can have multiple lines going into different ports. Okay, so if you want to see what attributes or what properties or what ports are connected, let's jump back up to our randomize around or our create strands here, you can click that button again. And now it's going to hide everything that is disconnected. So if we click twice, you can see we have the value back in our randomize around value node. That's because our value was plugged into our size. Now if you want to see every single port, you click it one last time, and now with all three of these, we get to see all of the inputs and all of the outputs. So for example, with our git null, if we don't want to see anything or we don't need all this information, we can click it to hide all of the information we don't need. Now if we want to see what connection is going out of this node, then click it again, and now we can see the outputs of our git null. And again, finally, click one last time to see all of our inputs. This is especially useful for larger nodes, such as this emit from null. You can shrink this down, and you can see that this really simplifies our panel here, or our ice tree. Now, of course, everything is still connected exactly the same, and we still have access to all of these different options. So this is simply a display modifier, and it lets you easily show everything or hide everything if you've already essentially connected it up. Okay, so in this lesson we learned more about what a node is, how to connect and disconnect nodes, as well as how to change their display properties here inside of the ice tree so we can minimize the amount of clutter we have or be able to see everything available. We also learned how to edit attributes on these nodes by simply double clicking them. So in the next lesson, let's take a look at what particles are as well as how to create these nodes and how to find them here inside of the ice tree.